welcome back to Four of Beauty. When will our YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. But do you know what? I'm enjoying doing these films. You all seem to be enjoying watching them. So I guess I'll just continue, huh? Right, as if you haven't already seen the thumbnail and the title of this film, and possibly even read my description box as well, you know that the look today has been achieved with this little nine pan palette from I Heart Revolution. And it's the unicorn palette and I'm trying to get it so that it shows you the holographic packaging. But so you can actually see the colours of the palette as well. So, if you want to find out exactly how well this little girl performed, whether I had any troubles along the way, and whether I recommend it, my friend, you are in exactly the right place. Get comfy? Here it comes. Hi, welcome back from the intro. Right. I haven't actually taken this out of its holographic box yet, so I don't know whether I'm going to pop it back into its box when I show you in the intro, which obviously I haven't filmed yet. This is another one of my Brexit broke my low buy purchases. Um, if you're unsure how this came about, um, we currently have an extension on Brexit to either April the 12th or May the 22nd, I think it is, depending on whether the PM can get um, a proposition through Parliament, which is not looking good at the moment. But um, initially, the out day was going to be the 29th of March, and the only place that I could find my absolute favourite mascara and a couple of palettes I was interested in was a German website. And at the moment, we can order from European sites because we're still in the European Union and not pay import tax on arrival. Which makes life so much easier for us, particularly when you've got like, you know, BH Cosmetics have got a German site, for example. Um, Essence and Catrice are much easier to get in Germany. A lot of it doesn't come over here. We get dribs and drabs coming over here, but we don't get the full range. Um, and when we do get palettes come over it's usually <clears throat> six months to a year after they've launched in Europe so if they're limited edition you just don't see them so I decided I was going to do a I was going to break my low buy rule and I was going to buy three more of these because I had, I had this about a month at the time um, and I go through uh, normally these last me three sometimes four months so I bought three more of those, figuring that will do me for a year. <clears throat> Hopefully by then, either that will have come across to the UK, or I will have found a UK version of that, or one that I can at least source easier. It gives me a year's breathing room. Unfortunately, because I've been so good with my low buy, that, that kind of triggered a spending spree. So I made a revolution order, which included this. Um, then the following, uh, the majority of this I will admit was happening sort of like two, three in the morning because I get woken up with pain, I start scrolling, see if anything's interesting, check my emails, see what's going on. Um, and then I'd found the um, email about this, I bought this one, um, and then the wet and wild gothographic stuff arrived on Beauty Bay, so I ordered one of those, and one of the lipsticks to go with it, and, and Hubby's bought me a um, coloured rain safari palette for our wedding anniversary. So I bought myself one of the lipsticks to match so that when I do the film for that, and I'm just like, whoa, I need to put the brakes back on. I've gone completely... Oh, and I bought myself <clears throat> the correct shade in this so I didn't have to keep mixing it. Admittedly, this was 
a third off though it was from 15 quid down to a tenner so I thought you know what I can actually justify that one but yeah I kind of went a little bit crackers so this is the unicorn palette from iHeart Revolution just a tiny little nine pan palette but it's got unicorns in each of the pans I have swatched this and I will be honest this did not swatch well however that doesn't mean it's not going to apply well because you can't always go by swatches plus I always swatch on a bare arm with no primer or anything and obviously my eyes have got which is why I've got this in this hand a primer on my face has been washed moisturized SPF'd and primed um, and my eyes have got this on, MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot, which I've not set because I want to give these as good a chance as possible. So, I'm going to put the swatches up on screen. Now, obviously, these haven't got names, so basically, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and that's the order they'll be on the swatches. So I'm going to stick those up now um, and then when I come back I'm going to be very up close and personal. Please don't be too shocked. Okay. Uh, my channel for those of you who are new is aimed at all skill levels from beginners to experts. Um, so I talk you through each step. Um, I don't speed up blending um, I do both eyes on camera rather than doing one on camera and then saying, right, I'm just going to do the other eye and I'll be back. Because that annoys me when people do that. <clears throat> Especially when I was learning. Because I'm like, oh, now I've got to try and remember what I did. Or rewind the film and try and do this all backwards, which isn't always easy, especially when you're learning. Also, my chronic pain means I can't blend as quickly as a lot of people do. So, if you find that I'm a little bit too slow for you, by all means, speed me up. That's what the speed widget is for. Okay, back to me again. Hello. Right, when I look straight, oh, I think I've done that a little bit too thick. Because obviously my skin, as you can see, my skin is, is neutral to cool. And soft ochre's quite yellow based. I might have to carry the eyeshadow a bit further up than I normally do. Because normally I'd, I'd sort of take the soft ochre to here and then blend it out so it fades out as it goes up the eye. I think I've done that a little bit too thick today. Never mind. Right. Now I've got deep set eyes. Which a lot of people think are hooded eyes. But they're not. Let me explain. When I look straight ahead you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. So I don't have hooded lids. Because you can see all of my mobile lid. If you can't see that then you either have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. Now the reason I say a lot of people get confused when they have deep set eyes like I've got if I cover up my mobile lid this side and close this eye you can see I've got as much lid again that folds back in. So because of that I do struggle with the same sort of things that with hooded eyes have I get transference of shadows onto the upper lid. When I cut my crease, I can't just nicely follow my eyeball, my eye socket, because that doesn't work. Um, I have to bring it up much, much higher, which means obviously I have to blend my colours much, much higher. Even when I use glitter glue, if I use glitter on my lid, it does split right in the crease here. So I do understand the issues you have. You can, however, still follow my tutorial if you have hooded lids. All you need to do, grab a brush, something like this, and with your eye open, just sketch where you need your crease to be. So if you imagine you can't see my mobile lid here, I would then do my crease here. Just creating the illusion of having a larger mobile lid. Obviously that will reduce the space between your crease and your brow. So when I'm using a big fluffy brush, use a slightly more tapered one. If I'm using a slightly more tapered one, then go for something like, this is a Coastal Sense 
type of blending brush. Uh, this is a Morphe M321. And this is a Morphe M562. Okay, so you've got a lot of options. Got to be honest, those two Morphe brushes I've bought recently because of Nikki Raven. So I blame you, Nikki, if I don't like them. Right. Let's get started with putting some colour on. Now, because obviously um, I've not set this, I'm gonna ha I can't just do my usual swipe, swipe, blend, blend, blend starting with the lightest, building up to the deepest. I'm going to have to do it the opposite way round and treat these as if they are pressed pigments, which I don't think any of them are. Oh, it says Makeup Pigment Palette. So, it appears that some of these are pigments, but does it tell me which ones? On the box, yes, but not on the back of here. So I might have to keep this box after all. Shades 1, 3, 5, 7 and 9. So basically all the mattes. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Container colorant not approved for the eye area in the USA. All that means is it's got a higher concentration of pigment molecules and might stain your eye. It won't, it shouldn't damage your eye, but if you do have super sensitive skin, then just test it somewhere else first before you stick it on your eye. Right. So I'm going to go straight in with the pressed pigment. This could explain why they didn't swatch very well, actually. And I'm going to go in with shade number nine. And there's not a huge amount of kick up on that, to be honest, quite firmly pressed. I'm going in with this Morphe 321 and with my, I'm just going to raise my brow slightly I'm just going to start tapping this along where I want my crease to be and what I do each time, I just lower my, relax my brows once I've done it, just to make sure that I can still see this colour you can see I need to go up a little bit there I only want it to just barely show because I want to try and use as many of these colours as I can today. I must admit I'm quite liking this Morphe brush already. It does very much depend, I mean there are some really shit Morphe brushes. I mean, got to be honest, I'm not exactly a fan of the Jeffree Star ones. Um, but I've got some Morphe brushes that I actually quite like. Um, they did um, an eye slay set, spelled E-Y-E, -E, which came in a gold, it was like five or six um, brushes, excuse me, hiccups, in um, like a goldy bronze bag. I think Christmas... 2017 and those are really nice um, but yeah I've picked up some Morphe brushes that are just bloody awful right so now I've got that where I want it I'm also going to now bring this down to my outer corner again I'm literally just tapping this in place at the moment I haven't tried any blending at all because we're, we're tapping it onto a non-set base. I'm kind of wrecking the unicorn as you can see. She's, she's going basically. Uh, and I'm just going to continue this down into my crease there. I'm not overly worried about that because that's probably going to end up with concealer on it because I'm probably going to cut the lid at some point. And now what I'm going to do is just pick up a little bit of extra pigment on the... I'm showing you a dark pigment on a dark brush, that really works well doesn't it? And I'm now going to just very gently 
holding this brush right at the end very very gently do little circular movements just to soften the edge of what we put down and to make sure we don't have any patchiness anywhere now I've not tapped this brush off at all there's a little bit of fallout but not a huge amount but you know I, I tend to do my eyes first now anyway so if you do do your face first um, I definitely recommend putting you know loose powder here translucent powder or whatever setting powder you use to catch any fallout I mean this is actually quite nice, this is going on quite nicely it's a real sort of black current shade quite like that actually hmm. right and now I'm going to do exactly the same thing on this side And with this eye, while I'm blind in this one, I can actually close my eye. Which does make it a little bit easier when you're applying. Because the, you, I can sometimes get the issue that when I'm applying shades like this, I get transference onto the, the lid. Um, it's really not an issue, I just clean it up with micellar water on a, on a Q-tip. Or, um, you know, if I'm cutting the lid with concealer, it's really not an issue anyway. Right, now you can see I've got really, really deep creasing here. This was caused because my eye was pulled around a lot when I was five years old. So, nearly 40 years ago now. Um, but you can see it does cause this striping. So I do have to really gently stretch the lid out there just to make sure that I don't have that telltale striping that's what I do the circular movements for because it gently moves the lid around and helps to eliminate any striping that you've got but unfortunately I know from experience that those particular creases are too deep and um, it doesn't actually work when I do that so do not stretch your lid out like I just have unless you absolutely have to. Otherwise, you will cause yourself to have deep creasing like that. And I can assure you it's a bugger and it only gets worse as you get older. Mine only really started to become an issue when I hit sort of 35, prior to that it wasn't too bad so adding all of the pigment on and then very gently very lightly tiny little circles just to make sure we've got everything blended how's your day been today? has it been a good one? or do you do you watch me to ease yourself into your morning because of, um, I know I've got a couple of people that uh, put me on when they're getting ready in the mornings because they find me quite soothing and quite relaxing to kind of ease them into their day. Um, others watch me when they're doing the dishes or doing the housework. I like that. Right, I'm going to use... A clean washcloth to change the colour on this particular brush and I think I want to try and use as many of those pigments as I can actually just out of interest to see whether they would actually stain me or not right so I'm now going to go in with another of the pressed pigments. I'm going to go in with number seven here.
this has got significantly more kick up in the pan than that previous one did. But don't worry about that because you can just pick it up again when you do your next row. So it's not an issue. Don't blow it away until you've finished using that colour otherwise you're just wasting it. So I'm just going to tap this just on the edge of that black currant. This is a much more raspberry colour. Yes, I roll my R's. It's the Welsh in me. I can't help it. This is actually quite similar. Once you get it on your eye, it is actually quite similar in tone to that black currant, as you can see. I'm just going to gently blend over where the two colours meet just to try and soften that line a little bit. I think I might pick up some more of this raspberry colour just to help with the blending. And so far given how badly these swatched I'm actually really impressed with how well they're performing on the lid. See this is the problem, it's like you get something that swatches badly and everyone thinks oh it's going to be a terrible palette and just... This is the problem when you swatch something in store as well, you think oh that swatches awfully or oh that swatches really well. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to apply well. The best way, <clears throat> if you're in a shop and you want to swatch the, the tester and see how good it is. I normally have um, a little brush, you know, the, you know like, um, like I've got one here, yeah. This is the brush that came in my Anastasia um, Riviera palette. I'll take that with me and I will do a brush swatch on my arm back of my hand or wherever I'm swatching. So I'll do a finger swatch and a brush swatch just to see how it performs because very often something that swatches really poorly using your finger as you can see with this behaves really quite nicely once you get it onto the eye because those swatches that I put up I'd gone over those at least twice on those mats to get them to show up but now that I know that they're pressed pigments I'm slightly less surprised at that to be honest because pigments don't tend to swatch that well well I've found they don't anyway always sit back and check that your shapes look about the same because very very few people have very exactly symmetrical eyes so you may have to do a shape ever so slightly different one side just that it matches the other eye because let's face it we don't want to do a James Charles and uh, photoshop one eye and mirror image it across do we? Yes I'm being sarcastic just annoys me with the amount of face tune that everybody uses the pictures that I put up on my Insta Unless there is an obvious Snapchat filter on them, <clears throat> I don't adjust them at all. The only thing I might do is, because my photos are taken here where I've got natural daylight and I've got um, LED strip lights, which you can probably see reflected in my eye here, if they're a bit dark, I'll lighten them up. But I don't do any um, face blurring, I don't do any... Um, any adjustment to the makeup at all or the skin or anything. Right so I've cleaned that brush off. I'm now going to pick up one of these little Morphe M562 brushes. Oh this is going to get stained with the pigment isn't it? What am I doing? Uh, I can't decide whether to go in with one or three. 
I think as these are looking quite pink, I'm going to go in with this one. Yeah, that's, that's going to stain. And that again has a fair amount of kick up in it. <clears throat> so I'm just going to... this on. Now I do struggle on the outer corners here and here because of um, creasing on my lid. So if I struggle a bit here it's my skin rather than the palette causing the issue. So I'm just gonna tap and blend. You can see that the creasing is really really not liking taking any pigment. So what you do is you just Pat some more pigment on and blend again. I've got to be honest, although these are three different colours, they're kind of blending together quite a bit on the eye. There's not as much distinction between the colours as I would have liked. And I think this brush is just completely wiping away the previous pigment that I put down, so that's interesting. But it is making it a little bit easier to blend, I suppose. You can see it's quite lightening the, the raspberry shade. I'm now going in with a strawberry one. So I've got black currant raspberry and strawberry. I've got a bloody fruit salad on my eyes, folks. So again, I'm just building, or trying to build, the pigment up on this corner. I might grab that previous brush, that uh, M321. Just see if I can get the pigment to... I might need a slightly firmer packed brush to actually get the pigment to apply and stay where I want it. Now even with that, see as soon as I start blending you just get a patch right in the middle that just completely disappears. See how that just keeps completely disappearing on that top corner there. It's like I've got a bloody hole in it. But it's just... Let me grab... I'm going to grab one of my Royal and Lang Nichols, the um, Sheep Pro Crease Brush. Just see if I can get this to... Because obviously that is a new brush that I'm using, so... Let's use a... Whoa! Okay, no, this pigment really isn't a very good one, is it? <clears throat> Even my Royal and Lang Nickel, which is one of the best brushes I've got, is just stripping that pigment straight off as soon as you try and blend it. That is really, really annoying. Don't quite know what I'm going to do about that actually. I mean, look, there's a, an entire patch that just doesn't want to accept colour at all. <clears throat> just build the pigment up and not blend it. See I'm assuming I'm assuming this is actually my eye being the issue rather than the brushes or the pigment. I think 
Well, that was a bit of fun and games, wasn't it, folks? Let's see if we have the same issue the other side, shall we? Oh, the joys of getting older and getting wrinkles. I tell you, if you have not got wrinkly skin yet, or fine lines, give thanks to whomever you give thanks to. If you're religious, thank them. If you're not, thank your mum for cooking you so well that she's given you skin that hasn't wrinkled yet. She's not around. I don't know. Thank Mother Nature. Yes, yeah, see this side, I'm not having the same sort of problem, so I think it must just be the skin on my eyes up there that's um, giving me. Oh, hang on. Have I just spoken too soon? I think I might have done, you know. Ugh. So these, these pigments do not like a lot of fine lines. If you do have a lot of creasing or fine lines on your eyes, um, I will try, I'll, I'll try this palette again with um, a concealer base because that tends to be a little bit more tacky. And I don't mean like, you know, what is she wearing tacky? I mean, sticky tacky. Than the mm. MAC paint pot. So I might do that. I might try it with, um, with a stickier base and see whether that makes a difference. But if you do have a lot of fine lines on your eyes, do bear in mind the trouble that I'm having on this top corner here. Right, so I'm just going to clean this brush off as best I can because quite clearly that, that's that's stained. I'm just what I do is I wipe it off on the washcloth until when I wipe there's no more pink coming off, and then I know that the bristles themselves are clean, even though they look a bit. But if I do this, you can see there's no colour coming off of that at all. I'm going to try this down here, just see if being slightly looser packed will help blend the raspberry and the black currant together a little bit nicer, which I think it is actually. I'm glad that I used the thicker brush to lay the pigment down. But this is great for blending those edges out. It really is. Well, of course, it now looks like I've dipped this brush in beetroot juice. Okay, so far I quite like this. Has been a little bit of a bugger up on the top corners here. Um, and to a certain extent, you can, that first colour does look like it's going a little bit patchy just in there. But not so much on this side, so it could just be the creasing on this side that's causing that issue. There's not a huge, once again, once it's on your eye, there's not a huge amount of difference between those first two shades that I put on. Right, uh, I'm going to put some foundation on, etc. And I will be back to finish off this eye look. Please don't go anywhere. Suddenly remembered I was going to cut my crease, so I'm going to do that now. So, this again is my number 12 acrylic nail art brush, which is absolutely bloody awesome for cutting creases. 
this is my Revolution Conceal and Define in 0.5 Concealer. And I will show you how I do my crease. This is a great tip for people with hooded lids or deep set eyes as well. If you're not sure how far up to cut your crease, initially just whack it on quite thick on your lid. And look up and blink a few times. And oh look, transfers up onto the upper lid to show you how far you have to cut your crease. I know cutting your crease can be very traumatic for some people, especially if you don't have perfect lids like some of these beauty gurus do with their Botox and fillers and stuff. But as I said, I knew I was going to be covering up that area that was a little bit patchy anyway, so that's why I wasn't overly concerned by it. Just gonna sort of feather that edge down a little bit. Not quite doing a full lid, but slightly more than a usual half cut crease would be. So I'm just patting this on. all over the lid and what I'm going to do I'm going to flick the brush over to the side that hadn't had any on it and pat over the whole area again and then that will take off a lot of the excess that's on there that would mix with the powders we're about to apply. Right, just cleaning that brush off so it doesn't go stiff because I'm going to do one eye at a time because I want the I want the lid to be really quite sticky. So in here somewhere, oh, for goodness sake. You ever have that when it's like you know you've got the particular brush that you're looking for but do you think you can find it this isn't actually the brush I was looking for but for the time being it will do because I just cannot find the one I'm looking for is that it yeah there we go no it's not that one might be better. Right, <clears throat> this is a slanted topped brush and then this is a packer brush. Okay, so I'm going to start off with this one just so that I can get really tight into that corner and I'm going to go in with I think this one. No, let's start with the silver. It's a really, really soft shimmer. Lots and lots and lots of kick up on that look. I'm just going to press that dry onto that sticky base you can use your finger to do this but at some point you are going to have to use a brush to get the accuracy at the edge of that line and if you're like me with nails like this you don't want to put those anywhere near your eyeballs Right, I haven't done the inner corner. I'm going to move to this larger brush. Tip it 
continue pulling that silver out. This is really quite pretty actually. As you can see, I've patted it on initially, and I'm just striking across to remove any excess that could fall down your eyes. I'm just cleaning the brush off, and now I'm going to go into that lilac, shade number eight. This isn't quite as softly packed as the previous one. I'm just going to press this. I'm getting a certain amount of fallout, but I'm using a dry shimmer, so I'm not surprised. But I don't like using shimmers wet on a um, when I've cut the crease because it can it can sort of water the base down somewhat. And I'm just gonna very gently drag that lilac across. onto the silver to just soften the edge. Oh, I like that. I like that quite a bit actually. <clears throat> right, and now we're going to do exactly the same thing on the other eye. So, concealer. You don't have to use an acrylic nail art brush, but I got a set of about six of these for, I think, three quid on eBay. And they are just great for doing this sort of thing, or for picking up glitters, laying down glitter glue, etc. And if... I mean, I know where my line falls anyway, but if your line doesn't go quite far enough across, stick it a bit higher up your lid. Blink again, and there's your line. So you will eventually get to the stage, which pretty much is the stage that I'm at, that I don't always have to blink to know how high up I need to cut my crease. But when I'm doing a tutorial, I tend to do that so that if you are new to cutting your crease, you do see the easy method. Because obviously where I've cut mine so many times now, I kind of roughly know where I need to go to. Just going to make sure that I've got that adequately covered on those creases there. Oh, there's a huge great spider outside my window. How pretty. Just swinging on his web. That's it, Mr. Spider. You catch the flies. I like spiders. Right, so, yeah, tapping all over. Again, I've not gone quite to the edge, put it over onto the side that I haven't got the concealer on, pat all over to pick up any excess. As you can see, it does pull a reasonable amount off. Clean the brush off. The reason I clean the brushes off straight away, <clears throat> especially with creams, is because I don't want them to get set into the bristles. It makes the the, um, the clean at the end of the week so much quicker. But it also means if I want to use this again tomorrow, it won't have stiffened up and there won't be any um, material on it from today, basically. It also gives your lids a couple of seconds to get super tacky. So, back into that silver with this brush. 
I am going to slightly pull my lid out here though because if I don't the shimmer tends to sort of glide across the top of those really deep creases and then throughout the day I, I sort of get a shower of it coming down my face which if you're wanting to create silver glittery freckles it's a fantastic cheap method for it but that's not the look I'm going for today so just clean that triangle brush off and put that one back and then go to this larger one and again pick up the silver just press it onto the lid because where the base is sticky it will hold it you don't need to wet your brush for this and you can see I'm still getting beautiful shine and as before give it a bit of a buff over to get rid of any excess clean brush now I'm going to pick up some of that lilac and just pop that on the outer edge and just lightly drag it across the silver just to soften where the two colours meet. Add a little bit more this side, deepen it back up again. Mm. That is super pretty. Those those shimmers are really a delight to play with. Right, this time I really am gonna go away and put some foundation on my face. I'll I'll be back. So, and sound like Arnold Schwarzenegger then. Okay, I'm back. I went for one of my more matte foundations today, so I did a shimmery blush just to just to counteract things really. <coughs> right. This is one of those Morphe ones I was telling you about from the I Slay collection. Unfortunately they don't give them numbers, so I can't tell you what it's called, but it's the flat top one I used earlier to show you. And I think there's only two pigments that I've not used so far. So I'm going to use them. So I'm going to go straight in with uh, shade number one, which is this sort of lavender here. Okay. And I'm just going to smudge that up under the lower lashes. I have got a little bit of staining under my lower lashes from a blue pigment that I used the other day. So could be affecting how the lavender looks. Either way, I like the way it's looking anyway. And it's flinching time because obviously I can't actually see what I'm doing this side because I don't have any peripheral vision. So I kind of have to rely on my viewfinder and muscle memory and hope I don't poke myself in the blooming eye. It doesn't always work. As regular viewers will no doubt attest. Then I have this little brush here. This came with the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. But I love it because it's flat top but it's thicker. So it's great for smudging out the under eyes. So the only one of the mattes I haven't used yet is the one right in the middle there. So, oh, that's got some kick up in it. Look at that. Maybe I'll tap that off just to little bit. I'm just going to smudge that along that lilac lash line. Just 
just to soften the lavender. Yeah, I think I can just about see that. It's, it's very light, obviously, and with me being super pale, it's never going to be a smack you in the face colour, is it? But it is actually blending that lavender out quite nicely. I quite like that. I do quite like that. Right. Now I need to decide what colour I'm going to do for my inner corner highlight. Well, I've used seven of these nine colours. I'm going to see if I can use the other two. So, I'm going to go into this shade number six, the lemon yellow. This is just a really cheap flat top brush I picked up from eBay years ago. But it is great for, wow, look at that. Popping around my tear duct. And with my shape eye, I actually like bringing it down just to meet whatever colour I've popped underneath my lower lashes. That's quite nice actually. I might try it wet in a minute. See if it makes a difference. Right, so let's pick up some of that on my brush. I'm going to give it a quick spray. This is the Revolution Fixing Spray in Vanilla and Coconut. You can use any spray you want really. You can even just use plain water, but never put a wet brush into a pressed pigment. Has that made any difference? I think that has made it a little bit of a... made it a little bit brighter maybe. Yeah. So I'm just going to clean off and dry off the brush on the washcloth. Pick up some more pigment on the brush. Wet it. I always dry the ferrule off as well so you don't get any liquid going down and loosening the glue here. And then I'll just pop that. has brightened it up quite a bit actually. Ooh, that's pretty. And now I'm drying the brush off again. The only shade I haven't used is numero 2, this one. So let's try it initially dry as an underbrow highlight. Let's try it wet as an underbrow highlight. That's more like the sort of thing that I want. Well, I actually used all of the shadows in this um, palette. Admittedly, it's not difficult. There is only nine. Well, there are only nine. I got so excited by using them all, I forgot my grandma. Hmm. Okay. I'm quite happy with that. Right. I am <clears throat> going to go off camera and do my mascara, stick a bit of um, highlight all over my face. Put a lippy on and I'll be back with my final thoughts on oh, do something with my hair as well. See you now. I'm back. Right. 
just so you know what else I've got on uh, my face today. Foundation is the L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear in shade Porcelain. Concealer is Maybelline Fit Me in 05. Bronzer is Butter Bronzer in shade Bronzer. Who'd have thought it? Uh, blush is the Wet n Wild Baked blush in Hummingbird Height, this is the luminous one, and I did the Wet n Wild highlighter in White Raven, which is from their um, previous gothographic one they did, which has got the skull in it, you can see there. Uh, brows are the Revolution dark brown micro brow pencil with a bit of the Essence Make Me Brow Eyebrow Gel Mascara uh, on it in doesn't really give oh brownie brows shade three uh, lippy Lippy is Jeffrey's Scandal from his Holiday 2018 setting spray. As I used it for the eyes, I thought I'd use it for the face as well. The Eye Heart Revolution Vanilla and Coconut. So, what do I think of... I put him back in his holographic packet just to remind me because of the pigments on the back. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Love that. Um... What do I think of this? Well, to be honest, I was surprised because, as I said, it did swatch really badly. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, it was quite a cheap palette. I think this was like, is it four quid? I'll double check and if it's anything different, I'll stick it up on screen. But I'm, I'm sure it was around about the sort of like four or five, six quid mark. Um, I've used every single shade in this palette. Now, admittedly, Shades 7 and 9, when you get them on your eyes, do look very, very similar. So I, I wish they'd made 9 just that little bit deeper. Um, just so that there's more of a distinct difference between the two. Um, and obviously number 3 we know went very patchy up here, but it looked like that was just because it, it wasn't reacting well to the fine lines on my eyes. Uh, the shimmers have all gone on beautifully. The ones on the lid went on dry, obviously in a corner and uh, under brow highlight I wet. So, you, you know, you do get slightly more glimmer from them um, if you're not putting them on a sticky base by doing it wet. Um, I'm actually genuinely surprised by how well this performed. Uh, it'll be interesting to see whether or not it does stain my eyes, but I won't find that out until later on tonight. And I very much doubt I'm going to remember to hit record and tell you about it. If I remember, I will do. Um, oh, mascara, by the way, was that Catrice one. Uh, Glam and Doll waterproof volume mascara. The one that I was waving about earlier, talking about Nicky Raven. I really like this. Um, okay, you're kind of limited to the number of looks you're going to be able to do with this. But it's a £9 palette, what do you expect? At least there are five mattes in this. Um, a lot of the times when you get a small £9 palette like this, you'll only have like two, maybe three mattes, which really does restrict you to the looks you can do. But having the corner shades and the middle shade all being matte, okay, or that they're pressed pigments, but they are a matte um, shadow. It gives you a lot of options in terms of how deep a look you want to go. You could, I mean, you could quite easily sweep that lilac across, blend it out with the pale pink. That's the door, hold on. So ways the way. <laughs> I never seem to get filmed without a phone call or the door in front of me. So, you know, you know what I 
you know, for an ordinary every day look, as I said, you could put the lilac on, you could blend it out with pink, and then bung the yellow or the white on your lid and done. Or, you know, blend the lilac out, put the pink on the lid and you're done. So, although you're restricted in terms of the colours of looks you can do, which is kind of what I meant earlier by restricted to what you can produce, everything's going to be a pinky, lilac-y purple, basically. Um, but there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you wouldn't have picked this up if you didn't like those colours. It'd be great to bung in a bag if you're going somewhere for the weekend or just overnight to a friend's and you want something to make yourself look presentable with in the morning. Uh, that's what I love about these smaller palettes. I'm really, really starting to dislike big palettes. I much prefer smaller ones. And do you know what? For the money, I'd say this is definitely worth it from mm. what I've seen so far. So, I will continue to use this. I will try it on a sticky concealer base. I will try it on a set concealer base and uh, see whether I can whether I still have those problems up here. If anything of if my opinion changes radically from the one you've just heard, then um, I'll film with it again and I'll let you know or I'll do like an update video um, where I say, okay, I liked this but now I don't or I didn't like this but now I do. So so far this gets the thumbs up from me. If you're interested in it, definitely worth picking up. Right, hope you found that helpful. I need to film the intro for this. I need to have some more drink from my gorgeous skull glass. Silicon straw. I'm environmentally friendly in this house. Um, and I need to crack on with editing. I've got about five films I need to edit. I've got two that I edited yesterday. I need to run through and make sure they've uh, exported okay and get them uploaded for you. So all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Thank you.